Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Vidaurre. I am the CTO at The Beacon. And uh, welcome to our first uh, devlog of hopefully many. Today we're going to be covering um, our progress in our dialog system, which touches a little bit about some other system we've talked a bit in the past, which is called Tinker, and why this, uh, I guess, uh, marriage between these two systems is important. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. So Rafa, why did we decide to make our own dialogue system? Basically, uh, the Godot ecosystem is fairly limited in terms of plugins, and none of the dialogue add-ons we found basically satisfied our needs. We have our own content scripting system as well, which is called Tinkered, which I briefly mentioned before. And we didn't want to add extra concepts unnecessarily. And at the same time, we think Tinker is a great complement to the dialogue system that we're thinking about. And also because we have multiplayer needs, which are very specific to our game, there was nothing out there that we could use. So we had to build our own, basically. Right, so we're going to do two demos today. For the first one, if you guys can see my screen here, we're just going to do a very simple dialogue here between the two of them. And then we're going to move to Sage Wind here and we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. What are those, like the, yeah. the yellow circles? There's a bunch of different, uh, these are called colliders. And there's a bunch of them that have different purposes. For this particular demo, we care about the yellow circles here, which are interaction areas. Basically, when I'm when a player is within this circle, they are going to be able to interact with something like an NPC, for example. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to select Robert, and I'm just going to create a simple interaction schematic. Schematics are the things that we create with Tinker. The Tinker is kind of like a visual scripting sort of system. So we're going to start here and say start. This is, these things, these notes here are called cogs. These are kind of like the building blocks of any thing that you do in Tinker, basically. And this is what bridges the gap between developers and gameplay scripters, so to say. Developers would create these little building blocks for, you know, uh, content scripters to use, maybe. Right, so cogs have inputs and outputs. Basically, these are the things that you can feed into the cog, and the outputs are the things that the cog provides to other cogs, for example. And the little arrows here are basically what we call execution ports, and they define how things run, like in what order. So we start, then we do the first dialogue here, which is Robert's dialogue, and then the second one, which is Juliet's dialogue. Right? I'm just gonna write some quick dialogue here. Yeah, and we have a bunch of options here. We can block the user's inputs, make it auto advance, or make it, you know, require an input to continue, for example. Uh, we can also define the location of the speech bubble, which I'm going to show why we might need that. And there's also an animation that we can associate. Just this is just for ease of use. You could also do it separately, but you might, there's usually the case that you want to play an animation while you're playing some dialogue, right? We're going to leave it empty for Juliet here, but for uh, Robert, I'm going to just make him drink as he says that he's going to quit meat for good. Super simple compared yeah. to, to straight up coding, right? And it requires zero code. That's the main thing. So we know what are the key components of gameplay in our game. That's why developers build specific cogs and not just very low level stuff. We try to make them high level so that they're easy to understand. And from then, you know, content scripters can just create whatever they need. So if they want to spawn an enemy or, you know. Okay, so this one is ready, by the way. So we can test it out. By the way, um, just mind you, we have a <laughs> sort of a mannequin. <laughs> character at this point. We're working on the display system, so this is how it's going to look for a little bit. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, so you can see here I am entering the interaction area, so you can see Robert here being uh, outlined. I'm just going to press E. Come on, Juliet, give me a chance. I'll quit the meet for good, I promise. And then you can see, you cannot see her dialogue, Aww. right? That's a problem. It's very common and it depends on a case by case scenario, right? So we have that flexibility as well. So if we go here to Robert again, and we have a way to actually define the location of a speech bubble. So in this case, we're going to do bottom right. I think that's that should work. And now the text should be readable, right? There we go. Yeah. So that's how quickly it is. It took five minutes to create this dialogue. We can go to the next one now. This one is going to take a little bit longer, so you might want to speed this up, I guess. <laughs> And we're going to do something new here, which we can ask the player for input. So you can see here we have two options. 
that we can branch from. This is basically, if the first option is selected, we're gonna go through this route. If the second option is selected, we're gonna go through the other one. All right, so let's worry about the second one, which is the most interesting one. By the way, we can use BB code in our dialog system. This uh, is some support we added that comes from the engine. We borrowed it for this particular case. So we're gonna do shake, for example, which would make the letters move in a fun funny way. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this and then I'm gonna add some functionality to this other. Let's first test this. If I just go again, let's pick the other one. He's laughing, right? So now let's actually make him destroy the last one. Finish the interaction. Uh, let's see if it works on the first try. <laughs> let's see. Okay, let's see. What did I do wrong? Oh, right. This what this is supposed to be here actually. <laughs> That's the whole idea of it. Oh, almost there. <laughs> We're just missing the actual explosion. Yeah, give me one second. I'll figure this out. But I mean, this is still a showcase of how easy it is to prototype anyway. Yeah, but also I'm rushing it <laughs> for the sake of the video. That's the other thing, I guess. Here, let's try it out. And then I'm going to explain just a little bit of the, the cogs that I use, just so you see what's going on behind the scenes. All right, so top is H win. She became evil out of nowhere. She changed the dialogue a little bit. Uh, okay, so now the options are inverted, that's that's fine. And there we go. <laughs> the lag score is dead, so I guess the village is in trouble. Just to show you guys uh, what the schematic looks like. Basically, we have the start dialogue here. That's the first one. And the second one is where we give the player the options. If they say no, then we just do some quick dialogue and finish. And if we say yes, there we have the mohahaha shake dialogue. And then two things happen. On one side, this is in parallel, by the way. On one side, we're just waiting to play this visual effect and we're getting the position of the visual effect based on these little cogs here. These are when you need more control about values and stuff like that, that's when you get into this kind of stuff. And they're fairly straightforward once you get them. And on the other side, basically, I'm just playing some animations and just ending up with the final dialogue. And that's pretty much it. There's a lot that Tinker can do that I'm not showing here. We're probably gonna save that for some other devlog abilities, you know, and more combat related stuff, which should be super interesting. But regarding dialogues, I think this this should be good enough for a first devlog. First of all, thanks for watching this devlog. I know it's sort of technical, but at the same time, we were not showing these kinds of things much before, and that's what we wanna change. We wanna see, uh, show you guys the progress as we make it. And I would say like, there's a lot uh, of interesting stuff that we have uh, stored uh, for you guys. There's stuff about combat, there's stuff uh, about just networking and how multiplayer would work. Uh, there's just so much stuff going on, how dungeons are actually going to be shaped because you have seen only like just a little piece. There's progression there. It's a roguelite, so there's going to be power-ups. And we plan on showing each of these things little by little in each of these devlogs and throughout the NFQ phases, phase two and phase three, of course. Also going to show uh... Not only like the dev side of things, but also showcase the amazing art team we have. Um, mm. We might show you some implementations on other areas. So, yeah. uh, I guess like one, one thing to add to that, by the way, it's something that is it's fairly uncomfortable for many of us to do because we, I think we have a lot of perfectionists in the team and it's very scary to sometimes show stuff that is not finished just because you know it's going to be way better. But at the same time, we made that mistake before of just waiting until the final possible moment to show stuff just when it's very polished and I think we should be building out in the open so so yeah just <laughs> bear with us if there's bugs or like just unfinished art and stuff think about how it's going to look in the future uh yeah yeah we'd appreciate that <laughs> uh, that would be it thank you guys thanks for watching bye bye nice bye